If you're learning how to hack games, you've certainly come across the concept of hooking. You might not understand what it is or how it works, but that's why I'm making this video. Function hooking, also known as function detouring, is a fundamental part of internal game hacking. It's extremely powerful and important, but the practice also has its problems. So let's talk about it. Before we do though, hooking functions and making cheats involves a lot of maths and computer science. If you're looking for a free and easy way to learn more about these topics, you're in luck because Brilliant.org is the best way to interactively learn maths, science, and computer science. Brilliant is designed to be fun and interactive, with thousands of excellently curated lessons that take you from beginner to advanced topics effortlessly. Before creating this video, I decided to go through their Algorithms and Data Structures course to touch up on my skills, and I was pleasantly surprised. The course is very engaging and interactive, with multiple choice questions and puzzles at every turn. I highly recommend it. So whether you're a student or a professional, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash CAS or by clicking the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. The first thing we need to consider when talking about hooking is memory access. As you should know, there are two primary types of cheats, internals and externals. Internals come in the form of a .dll file, and they get executed within the game, whereas an external would be a separate process which modifies your game to make cheats. Because internals literally run within the game, they have direct memory access. Externals do not, and this is why hooking is predominantly an internal activity. Something close to hooking is possible externally through shellcode injection, but it's considerably less convenient and less efficient than internal hooking. So then, what exactly is hooking? Well, a video game is a program, and a program is made up of a sequence sequential set of instructions. You can see this by opening up any program in a disassembler. It's just a list of assembly instructions that split into branches. Hooking allows us to intercept the flow of these instructions and make impactful changes to how the game works. So let me begin with a code example. Let's say we have a game and somewhere in the game there is a take damage function. This function is called every time your player loses health points. If you pay attention to the function, you'll notice that it takes one argument, that being the amount of damage to subtract from the player's health pool. When you hook a function, you call the program to call your own version of the function, wherein you can make changes, but then in your hook, you must call the game's original function in order to return the program to its original flow. In this example, we can hook the take damage function and change the value of the damage parameter to zero before calling the original function. In our hypothetical game, this would cause you to never take damage, because every time the game tries to apply damage to your character, it's calling our own function, where we set the damage to zero before passing it back to the game. The original function is extremely important, because because a game's instructions are called in a specific linear order. If we hook a function and do not call the game's version of the function afterwards, the game is going to crash because it will end at your function. A game is a collection of functions calling each other to create a loop. If we don't call the game's original function, we break the loop and crash the game. A good example of where hooking is extensively used would be in rendering. If you've ever wondered how the Discord, Steam, or any other overlay works, they're injecting a DLL that hooks the game's rendering functions, allowing the overlay to be rendered within the game. This is exactly how you would make an internal menu or ESP as well. For example, if your game is running DirectX 11, you can hook the present function to render things natively within your game. Hooking is also used extensively in both malware and anti-malware programs, along with cheats and anti-cheats as well. Let me take this time to explain that hooking is quite easy to detect, and if you're worried about detection, it would be better for you to not hook in the first place. Hooking usually involves replacing the game's code with custom instructions. Anti-cheats can easily counter this by monitoring the sections around commonly hooked functions. With all of this being said, it really just depends on the game. Sometimes you'll get away with hooking, but sometimes you won't. In this video, we're going to primarily focus on two types of hooking, those being trampoline hooking and VMT hooking. Keep in mind that there are basically hundreds of ways to hook things, and I'll discuss the more esoteric ways of hooking later on. But for now, we'll focus on these methods of hooking, because from my experience, they are the most popular. Beginning with trampoline hooking. This is a type of inline hooking, which involves directly modifying the assembly of the program. We usually do this by placing a relative jump instruction at the beginning of the game's function to redirect the program to our own code. We call it trampoline hooking, because once our custom code has been executed, we redirect the game to a so-called trampoline function, which serves as an intermediary between our code and the game's code. The trampoline function will return the program's flow back to the original method after our modifications. Understanding why we need the trampoline function seems quite complicated, so let me explain it. 
If we modify a function in a game and make it call our own code, we've created an inline hook. This hook, unfortunately, is flawed because what happens when we want to call the game's original function within our hook? Well, when we call the game's function, it's going to call our function, which will then call the game's function and so on, creating an infinite loop of recursive death. This is why we have the trampoline function. It allows us to call the game's function in our hook without creating an infinite death loop. The other type of hooking that we're going to discuss in this video is VMT hooking. This is a special type of hooking. I say that because VMT hooking exploits a feature of C++ and therefore it only rarely applies to games that use C++. The feature in question is that of virtual functions. I'll make a much more in-depth video on this topic in the future but for now all you need to know is that when you declare a function as virtual in a class C++ inserts an invisible array of function pointers into your class. This invisible array is known as the virtual method table or VMT for short. Remember virtual functions are meant to be overwritten by classes that inherit from them. C++ deals with this by storing the addresses of the methods belonging to the class in the VMT. This means that if you can find the address of a VMT, and then if you can find the index of a function in the VMT, you can simply set the function pointer to point to your own function. We call this pointer redirection. Before you do this though, you might want to save the address of the original function so that you can call the original in your VMT hook. Otherwise, you're going to run into the crashing problem that I mentioned earlier in this video. Standard VMT hooking is very easy to detect because anti-cheats can simply monitor the pointers in the VMT to make sure they do not change. This is where so-called shadow VMT hooking comes into play. Instead of redirecting the pointers in the VMT as is, we can actually make a copy of the entire VMT and then set the class's VMT to our copy. Now we can redirect the pointers in our copy and simple anti-cheats will have no idea what's going on. You can find plenty of excellent libraries online which make hooking a walk in the park. I think we've all heard of minhook, which is still wonderful, but there are others like polyhook, which do an equally great, if not better job. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's meant to serve as a simple introduction to the concepts around hooking. Keep in mind that there are basically hundreds of ways to hook things and every situation is different. The examples I showed in this video are also extremely simple. If you want to apply this knowledge, you're going to need to do some research for yourself and your needs. With that being said, be sure to check out my socials in the description down below. And as always, shout out to the following sexy patrons. You guys are awesome. Until next time, cheers and peace out.